Jeremy, great job. Lewis, that's the second test you failed this month. What's going on? Um, sorry, Miss Wilson. I, um... It's because he's dumb! <laughs> Sean, that's not very nice. Well, if you want to graduate, you can't fail any more exams. You understand me? Class, please open your books to lesson three. Who wants to read? How about... Lewis, well, why don't you read for us? Um, can someone else read instead? I didn't call anyone else. I called on you. Is there a problem? Yeah, everyone knows that the pea brain can't read. <laughs> Sean, stop it. Lewis, go ahead. Um, okay. Lesson three. Set. Synthesize. Synthesize the con. Con. Lewis, this is not a difficult word. Sound it out. Con. Ugh, it's content, smart guy. Sean! What? Come on, Ms. Wilson, he's in the eighth grade and he can't even read? Why can't you pick on someone who's not so duh, duh, dumb? <laughs> <laughs> Sean, cut it out. Lewis, I'm worried about you. You're not at the reading level you need to be. I just mix up my words sometimes. I'm afraid you don't belong in this class. Come with me. Have fun in special ed, dummy. <laughs> Here you are, Lewis. Your new class. Lewis? Hi, I'm Mrs. Green, your new teacher. Mm, nice book. You like Tony Robbins? Yeah. My dream is to become a writer and speaker one day. I want to be great, just like him. Well, well, well. If it isn't L L L Lewis and his special ed for 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 friends, all you'll ever grow up to be is a janitor. Hey, you get out of here right now, or I'm gonna send you to the principal's office. Oh my goodness. Hey, don't listen to him, okay? No, he's right. I'm just dumb. I'll never be smart enough to be great like Tony. I probably won't graduate. Let me ask you something. What do you think Mr. Robbins would say to that? I, I don't know. Well, I know exactly what he would say. Because he wrote it on a picture for me. When I met him. It says, whatever you believe, you can achieve. Signed, Tony. He really signed that? Yeah, he did. You know what? Here. Keep it. And if you ever lose belief in yourself, you remember that. Thanks, Miss Green. I'll never forget this. <laughs> Oh, and do me one favor. Don't forget to bring me a signed copy of your book when you become best-selling author, okay? I will. <laughs> With the help of Miss Green, Lewis finally starts believing in himself for the first time in his life. Over time, Lewis learns how to read and starts doing much better in school. With Mrs. Green's help, he eventually graduates on time and becomes one of the top ranking students in his school. Several years pass and Lewis decides to start writing his very first book. He goes around trying to sell his book to strangers. 
He does this day after day, so excited to get his book out there. That is, until he realizes no one wants to buy it. The book was a total failure. After months of trying and failing, he starts losing belief in himself and decides to give up on his dreams. But then one day, he happens to run into someone that he used to know that would change his life forever. I don't know what I was thinking. I can't be an author, I'm too dumb. Whatever, Sean was right, I should just go be a janitor. Watch Sorry. where you're going. Sorry, it's my fault. Wait, Lewis? It's Miss Wilson from middle school. Oh. Uh. How have you been? <laughs> I've had better days. What's wrong? Well, I tried to come out with a book, but um, it was a total flop. Nobody read it. Oh, well, I wouldn't beat yourself up too much. I mean, after all, you were in special ed, right? It was good seeing you. What am I doing? Like I could be a writer, like I could be anything, like Tony Robbins. I wish I'd never read this stupid book. Whatever you believe, you can achieve. And if you ever lose belief in yourself, you remember that. That's it. I have to keep believing in myself. I'm not gonna give up. With newfound motivation and belief, Lewis gets to work on writing a new book. A few years go by, and this time, his second book is a huge success. Lewis becomes one of the best-selling authors in the world. He develops a huge following, creates a top-ranking podcast, and even meets his idol, Tony Robbins. Lewis's work inspires millions of people around the world. And then one day, he decides to go pay a visit to an old friend. Hey, Miss Green. Lewis. Oh my goodness. Look at you. It's so good to see you. What are you doing here? Well, I wanted to bring you something. It's my new book. I signed it for you. Lois, you remembered. I am so proud of you. Miss Green, I'm starting to sweep the floors. Sean, perfect timing. You remember Lewis Howes uh, from school. He's a best-selling author now. Lewis. Wow, I, I can't believe it's you. Of course, I know who you are. I, the last time I saw you was... When you told me all it ever amount to was being a janitor. Look, I'm sorry about the way that I treated you when we were kids. I was wrong about you. I, actually, I, I listen to your podcast all the time. Really? I'm a huge fan. Oh, thank you. Can I get one of those? You want me to sign it too? Yeah. Can you give me some advice? Sure. My dream has always been to have my own business one day, but I'm just a janitor, so probably won't happen. Well, a wise person once told me, whatever you believe, you can achieve. So always remember that. Dad, I'm so hungry. Okay. Let's get you a hot dog. <laughs> Hey, Ivan. Harold! Did you get us a hot dog? Ah, uh, uh, never mind, I don't, I don't have enough. 
But I really want a hot dog. Uh, I'm so sorry, son. After I get a job, I promise you will never be hungry again. Okay? Okay. Hey, you know what? Don't worry about it. This one's on me. No, you, you got it last time. I know business has been tough on you, and I can't ask you to do it again. Hey, <laughs> it's okay. I might not have a lot of customers, but it's better than being hungry. Besides, I've always believed that the kindness you put out into the world has a way of coming back to you. There you go. It's okay, take it. Thank you so much, Ivan. Can't tell you how much I appreciate this. Got an interview with Giovanni's, and once I get the job, I promise I'll pay you back soon. Giovanni's? Woohoo, that's the most popular place in town. Good luck. And hey, if you want, Ruben can just wait here until your interview's over. You're the best. I'll never forget this. I'll be right back, okay? Okay, good luck. <laughs> yeah. Have a seat. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. We don't allow homeless. I'm here for a job interview, actually. The owner, Giovanni's expecting me. Would you grab him for me? Um, sure. Sir, there's someone here to see you. Enjoy your meal. Thank you. Okay. Hey, uh, I'm sorry, what's happening? Uh, you know we don't allow homeless people in the restaurant, right? I tried to tell him, but he says he's here for an interview with you. Uh, no. The applicant who I am interviewing used to run a Kitchland Star restaurant, okay? Yes, sir, that, that was me. I used to run Harold's restaurant. You see? <laughs> Come on, you're telling me that you used to run a restaurant? Get real. Will you get rid of this joker, please? No, look, look, here's my resume. I've been running kitchens my whole life. I just ran into some hard times recently after my, after my wife passed away. That's why I look like this, but I promise. You give me a chance. You know what? I can't believe that you would go so far as to make up a fake resume and a fake story just to get a job. You know what? I'm not going to fall for your little scam, and I am not going to allow anybody else to fall for it either. No, sir, please. please. I'm just trying to feed my son. Take a look at this restaurant. You see how busy it is? You have to wait weeks in order to get a reservation here, and I did not get to where I am in life by being a fool. I can do this. Leave. Now, before I call the cops. Okay. <sighs> do you get the job? Uh, no, son. I'm really sorry. But I'm going to think of something. I promise. I don't understand. Why didn't they give you the job? You have so much experience. Well, let's just say they took one look at me and the interview was over. Look, I don't want you to think I'm not going to pay you back for those hot dogs. Harold, Harold, no, that is the last thing you have to worry about. Thank you for everything, Ivan. I'll be back to see you soon. Come on, son, let's go. But, Dad, you haven't eaten all day. What are you going to do? I'll be fine. Don't worry about me. Hey, wait. Why don't you come work for me? You said yourself you don't have enough customers. You don't need any additional expenses. Well, no, I, I can't pay you a salary, but suppose you take a 20% commission for all the hot dogs that you sell. Won't be much, but it'll be something. Really? Are you sure about this? Yeah. And you know what? As a signing bonus, why don't you have that hot dog? Oh my gosh. I can't believe this. Thank you, Ivan. I won't let you down. Oh, I know you won't. I believe in you. This is good. But I got a few ideas to make these things even better. May I? Yeah, of course. I'm thinking onions, bell peppers, jalapenos, mayonnaise, the things you. What are you doing here? Oh, no, wait. Don't tell me you actually hired this guy. Oh, I did. He's gonna help me turn my stand around. <laughs> well, that is like adding water to a sinking ship. 
Good luck. You know what? <clears throat> Here, take this. For when you finally go out of business, which you will, send your remaining customers over to me, Ed Giovanni. Okay. I will just leave that right there for you. Good day, gents. <laughs> you believe that guy? Yeah, he was on the interview me. Look, if you change your mind. No, 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 no. I stand by my decision. Looks good on you. Thank you. Feel good to wear one of these again. <laughs> yeah, I do need you to do one thing for me. What's that? Let's make that guy pay for what he did to you. Make him eat his own words, all right? Harold is more passionate than ever to help Ivan turn the hot dog stand around. Using his years of experience working in a kitchen, he starts experimenting with new toppings and creating his own style hot dogs. When his son takes a bite, he can't believe how good it is. Harold then expands the menu to include even more items, including corn on the cob, burgers, and sausages. In no time, customers start lining up so excited to try all the new food. The business slowly starts to pick up. As word spreads about all the amazing new food at the hot dog stand, more and more customers start to come, so excited to eat Harold's food. Even a news reporter comes out to do a story about the man who went from being homeless to being an amazing chef at this popular hot dog stand. Sure enough, the story ends up going viral causing even more customers to flock to the hot dog stand. And then one day, Giovanni happens to pay them all a visit. Hey, what's going on here? What's, what, what's with this line? Oh, you didn't hear? That man used to be homeless, but now he's running a booming hot dog stand. Food is incredible. It's such an amazing story. Oh, I guess that's why nobody's eating at my place anymore, huh? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm again. <clears throat> so, <laughs> I guess you do know how to cook after all, huh? Yeah, I guess so. Well, judging by your line here, it looks like you're doing something, right? But listen, I was thinking, I feel bad about how I treated you before, you know, and um, why don't you come work for me at Giovanni's, huh? Really? Yeah. I thought you didn't want to hire me. Yeah, well, I, I, honestly, you know, things have... Um, gotten kind of slow at my place since you became the talk of the town, you know? <laughs> so, um, what do you say? Uh, thanks, but, uh, no thanks. We're happy here. Okay. Whatever. You know what? Since I'm here, why don't I try one of your hot dogs, see what all the fuss is about, huh? Sure, but, uh, you're gonna have to wait in line. You want me to wait? You want the, the Giovanni to wait? No, this is ridiculous. Get out of my way. <laughs> hey, hey, boys, how's it going? Great. Sales have exploded, man. Check it out. There you go. Oh. I'll tell you what. Why don't you just go ahead and keep that? What? What are you talking about? This is your money. Well, I did the math, and based on all the sales from the last couple months, your 20% completely covers the cost of the hot dog stand. So, congrats. That money's yours now. Wait. Really? Oh my gosh. I can't believe this. It's going to change our lives. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Ivan. I. I don't know what to say. Please, please, it should be me thanking you. I've actually been able to open up two more hot dog stands because of all the money that you made me. <laughs> that makes me so happy to hear. I guess it's true. Kindness that you put into the world as a way of coming back to you. Thank you.
So what you think? You really think people are gonna watch this? It's always been my intention to share these messages through videos, through books. You see, I used to be a monk. Wait, you used to be a monk? Yes, and I've had this vision to make wisdom go viral. <laughs> Let me get this straight. You're 28 years old. You have no background or degree in film. You hardly have any professional experience and you want to make videos? Look, as a media executive, I could promise you right now that your idea will never work. Why don't you just stick to a regular desk job and not try to make wisdom go viral? But sir, please, I just need one chance. This is my dream. I, I don't have time for this. Now, if you don't mind. Yes, sir. I'm sorry I've wasted your time. Hey man. So? How'd it go? Not good. He said the same thing everyone else has told me. My idea would never work. Man, I'm, I'm sorry. All I've ever wanted to do is serve people. And this guy was my last chance. He's probably right. I should just give up and stick to a nine to five. A nine to five? Jay, you can't just give up. Inspiring people is what you're meant to do. Besides, what's that one line you always say? Um, don't worry about rejections. All you need is one person to say yes. You. Okay, so what do you think I should do? Look, we don't need some media executive to create content. I've got a camera. Right here. You can just make videos on your own. You're right. I've never thought about it like that. Okay. I'm going to do it. With newfound excitement, Jay started recording inspirational videos by himself. And over time, he started getting really good at it. He would record all day and edit all night. He learned everything on his own without the help of anyone else. After he'd finished editing, he'd upload his videos onto Facebook and YouTube. And before he knew it, Jay started getting millions of followers and billions of views. He ended up becoming one of the most successful content creators and motivational speakers in the world today. And then one day, he happens to run into the media executive. And that's how I've been trying to make wisdom go viral. Wow. What an incredible story. And now, he has a new book coming out on September 8th called Think Like a Monk. And if it is half as inspiring as this interview, then you'll definitely want to read it. And cut. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Congrats on your new book. Now, can I keep this? Of course, okay. it's yours to have, it's yours to have. And I'm so grateful to meet you today. All right, take yeah, care. thank Bye. you so much. What? I was wrong about you. Oh, hey, so good to see you. And likewise, and congratulations. Thank you, thank you so much. You know, after we met, I started seeing your videos everywhere. You really did make wisdom go viral. 
Look, I'm so very sorry for not believing in you. Thank you so much, but no need to be sorry. To be honest, I should be thanking you. Thanking me? But, but when I turned you down. Exactly. And if you hadn't done that, I wouldn't be where I am today. You see, you helped me realize that I didn't need to worry about the rejections. And the only person I needed to say yes was me. So thank you. Uh, oh, oh, by the way, uh, do you, would you mind signing this for me, please? Oh, I'd love to, thank you. To Danny, right? Yes. Yeah. Danny, it was so good seeing you again, and I'm really grateful for what you shared with me. Hey, keep inspiring. Thank you, Danny. Take care. Grant, are you okay? You've been in there a while. Yeah, Mom, I'm fine. Why did you lock the door? I told you not to lock the door. What are you doing in there? Just give me a sec, okay? I'm coming in. Mom, you can't just come into my room like this. You're doing drugs? It's nothing, okay? It's nothing. You said you quit. Look, I don't need a lecture right now, Mom. Just give him back. No. What are you doing? Stop. I can't believe you just did that. I don't even know who you are anymore. Where is my son? The one who wanted to be somebody. The one who wanted to start his own business and help people. This isn't him. I told you I'm going to quit, okay? I have been trying to help you. If you don't stop, you could end up in jail, or worse. Please hear me. You have to go back to rehab. Rehab? I can't go back there. That counselor, what's his name, Phil? He said I'm never gonna change. Have you changed, Grant? Look, I know it was hard for you when your dad passed away, but this, isn't the way. I don't have time for this, okay? I gotta go. There he is. What's up, Danny? What's been up with you, man? Still working on that business and stuff? Yeah, I haven't really gotten around to it yet, but uh, it's gonna be big. Real big. Yeah, right. Anyway, you got the cash? Got the stuff? Yeah, man. Right back here. Hey, Danny. Who's this guy? Stop! Look at you, Grant. You will never change. Never. Good luck with your business. It's not a big deal, okay? I just need to borrow some money. No. That's it. Enough is enough. Grant, I love you with my whole heart. But this has got to stop. Mom, I don't need another lecture. Do you think your father would be proud of you? No. 
This is it. You are going back to rehab. What? Mom, no. Don't do this to me, okay? I don't have anywhere else to go. Please. Son, I know you can change. There is a greatness inside you. But in order to change, you have to change. Mom, you can't just kick me out. Go. Just go. I can't look at you like this anymore. Mr. Cardone, Grant, I thought I'd see you here again. 14 days clean. <laughs> I didn't think you'd last 14 hours, to be honest. Here's your release papers, sign this. You know, everyone here said you're doing real good, but I know you'll be back in rehab real soon. No, I won't. You know, I'm gonna start a business, maybe write a book, I'm going to help people. <laughs> help people. Grant, you will never change. Will never change. Will never change. Son, I know you can change. But in order to change, you have to change. You know what? I am going to change. Going forward, I'm never going to do another drug in my life. <laughs> yeah, right. Look, the truth is you are a drug addict. You're either going to wind up dead or back here in rehab. No. I've got big goals. You're going to be asking for my autograph one day. You'll see. <laughs> no, your only goal should be to stay off of drugs. Grant goes back to his mom's house and is tempted to go back to his old ways. But this time, he finally makes the right decision. He applied for a job selling cars and pretty quickly became a top car salesman. He sold more cars than anyone else in his company, but that was just the beginning. The new Grant had bigger dreams, 10 times bigger. He started writing books and over time, Grant became one of the best-selling authors in the world. Grant started speaking to small crowds, and then those small crowds turned into massive crowds. Grant finally was living the life he dreamed of, a life that he knew his dad would be proud of. Then one day, he happened to run into Phil. Mr. Cardone, it's Grant. Yeah. I don't know if you remember me. I'm Phil, counselor from when you were in rehab. Yeah, I remember you. You're, you're the guy that said I'd never be anything more than a drug addict. I really regret saying that. I'm so sorry. You, you, you got one of my books? This? <laughs> yeah, it's for my daughter. Uh, she's a huge fan. Would you actually mind sure. trying? Yeah, happy to. Man, how did you do it? All the books? All the businesses and helping out all these people? Took some great advice from a wise woman. She's told me, to change, you gotta change. And I just 10 x it. Thank you so much. Who was that, dear? That was Phil, the, the, the counselor from rehab. He's reading one of my books. Wow. Your dad would be so proud of you. I've always wanted to join a car club. You belong in a kitchen, not around cars. No one's ever let me this in. This is a members-only car club. It's the four of the few streets. I'm thinking about giving up. If Supercar Blondie can make it. I cannot give up. So can you. But maybe you should have just stuck to playing with Barb. 